Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to this door in a wall. Let's go see what's in there. Today we're going to be working in this foreign substance called metal. But don't worry, in a little while we will be getting to the white oak. But yes, we're actually at Bad Axe Toolworks and we're going to be working on putting together the saw that I purchased. So they let me come up and, and shoot a video of it being made. Uh, all of their saw blanks come from a laser cutter, but then they have to do all of the finish and refining on it. The first step is actually to set the teeth. And they do all hammer setting, uh, though this uh, setter makes it a lot easier. They are working on making one that's a little more automated rather than actually having to crank it and setting it to eye. But as she cranks it, it stops and she does the same amount of uh, percussion on each one. So slight, slight crank around. Each time it goes a little farther and a little farther. Uh, and, yeah, go all the way through on one side and then turn it around and go all the way through on the other so that the set stick out past on, on both sides. You can see how the teeth stick out just a little bit on one side or the other. It's not sharpened yet, uh, but it is set. And this is actually one of the most important steps in saw production. If the set isn't right, the saw will not cut straight. You need to have an even amount of set on both sides and an even amount down the whole length. So having a skilled person doing the setting is incredibly important. All of the rest of the saw still has a lot of burrs left on it uh, from the laser cutting. And so they have to come over to a diamond wheel and clean off all of the burrs. For the OG toe and some of the other spots, they actually will do it with a, a file. But it's important to do that so when it goes into the back, it's not actually peeling off metal inside the back. It will slide in so there's not a sharp corner. Because uh, once it comes from the, the laser etcher, there's actually a, a sharp corner on there that would cut into the, the brass. So then grab a file and then do the cleanup on the other edges and make sure that they're all smooth so that you're not going to cut yourself and it won't mess up the brass back. Speaking of the brass back, now it's time to install it. So we can set it down into the vise a little ways and apply a little bit of wax so that the back goes down on farther. Um, all of their backs are folded backs and it's, it's a very, very good thing for a back saw to have a folded back. It allows you to have some flexibility and movement in the plate so that in the future you won't kink it and you can make adjustments in, in the future. If it's riveted or glued on, uh, it works, but it's not, it's not great. Uh, so once the back gets worked on there. Now we can make sure that everything is in the right amount. You want to have a slightly shorter distance up by the toe than at the back and so if it's not exactly where you want it, you can set it down and tap it around. They have these uh, nylon faced hammers for adjusting the back and, and moving it around on there. Speaking of white oak, here's the handle. And uh, the handles are, are uh, made outside and then they can actually make them fit. But they do make all of the handles individually so that you can size them to your hand. So you can actually order a handle to fit your hand size. And that's very important if your hands are larger or smaller and you can make it exactly what you want. And it's very, very useful for a saw if it actually fits your hands. I want to make sure there's a nice clean fit so it slides all the way in and out. But you also notice there's a gap when it goes all the way in there. We need to fix that. Uh, and for that, we actually need to cut off a little bit of the back plate. So we're going to put a bit of an angle on there so that it will slide all the way back in. So she marks out where they all intersect and then with the shear can slice off that little bit so that the back will actually slide all the way back into the saw. So everything's been fit and it now fits in nicely. Now we need to drill the holes through the plate. Uh, and if you ever drilled through spring steel, you know, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. Uh, 1095 spring steel is, uh, is enjoyable to drill drill through, um, said no one ever. But with a good carbide bit and a little bit of oil, it actually goes relatively well. Uh, this Demon Possess drill actually makes things fairly, fairly quickly, but if you want to do it with a hand drill, I, I guess you could. But even I'm not that crazy. <laughs> we want to clean off the little bit of burrs so we're not uh, tearing up the plate as it goes in. And then we can go on to actually fitting the handle on and making sure everything nice and tight and putting in the, the hardware for it. Um, all of the hardware you can order uh, brass or black or blue, and they have several different options for that. One of the nice things about their saws is they're all um, custom made, so you can specify exactly the hardware you want, the back coloring, uh, the handle size and type, and so you can get a saw that's fit to match you. Drive them all down on and tighten it down in place. 
And then we want to make sure that there's no wiggle in, in the, the handle. And one of the problems that some people do is they just crank these down tighter and tighter to get rid of the wiggling. And you want them to be tight, but you don't want them to be over tightened. Uh, and so to actually get the wiggle out, you adjust the back and the back slides around to then tension the handle to the plate. And so the back is integral with it. So what she's going to do here is check and see if there is wiggle in the handle. And then we can put it in the vise and tap it out. You can see how the handle moves around just a little bit. And so if you bring in the hammer and tap the back back into the, the handle itself, that will lock it in place. And so then you can get a nice tight fit. We also want to make sure that there is no wobble in the blade. There's no uh, kink or twist in it. And so you can do that by tapping the back and setting it into place. And this is one of the great things about a folded back is it makes it adjustable. So once you adjust it, you can get it exactly where you need to be. And if it's a problem in the future, you can adjust it back. Now on to the meditative part, the sharpening. And this uh, saw sharpening tool is, is making me very, very jealous. <laughs> These are a lot of fun, but it's, it's basically hand filing just done on a far more precise level. And they can set this up with the fleam and rake for every saw, and it is a fascinating saw. But actually watching them do the work is uh, incredibly meditative. Uh, and uh, yeah, I could sit and watch these teeth come into shape for, for a long time, and it's it's really kind of a cool system. Uh, it's the exact same system as hand filing. It's just everything is held a little more accurate. Uh, so if you want to have your saws sharpened, uh, Bad Axe doesn't, but next door Mark actually has a, a company where he refurbishes uh, saws. You can see how the teeth come out. Uh, there is a, a slight flame to these teeth, um, so it is a, a hybrid cut, but they'll all file from one side, turn the plate around, and then file from the other side. And after going through a few of these, uh, it's sharp, and we can actually take it on and test it. So let's take it over to some white oak. Ooh, it's time for white oak, yes. Uh, and, and we can do the, the cutting in here. You'll draw a line on the board and then run down the line and make sure it's cutting true and clean. And if it is wandering off one way or the other, they can adjust the set or the plate as needed to make sure that everything runs the way you want it to be. After cutting, you're also going to check the saw and make sure that there isn't any twist or wind in it and everything is true and clean. And make sure that the line itself is actually square to what was, um, what was cut. And with all that check being done, the, the saw is done. And it's kind of cool to see how everything comes together and you do all these checks to make sure you get a really nice, perfect saw. And with that, we have a bad axe saw. And I am incredibly happy. So you have it, the Bad Axe OG Toe Tenon Saw. I'm loving this thing. I, I have been playing with it the last week or so. And uh, the, the thumb grip is one of those things, you either love it or you absolutely hate it. And personally, I love it. Um, I know there's a lot of other people who really don't, uh, but it feels really, really good in the hand. Uh, especially with this, there's a spite, space for your finger to come around. And I really had a lot of fun going to Bad Axe and seeing how they made their saws. I've been trying to get up there for a long time and was very, very glad to finally be able to make that. So yeah, I, I hope you like this video. It's kind of interesting to see how some people do things differently than I do or other people do. And it's always fun to learn new processes. So if you want to find out more about Bad Axe, I'll leave links to that down below. And if you have any questions, throw those in the comments. I will answer as many of them as I can. Or if there's something I don't know, I'll pass them on to Bad Axe. And if you do put a question down below, thank you. You are one of the people who are helping us grow because with all of the comments, questions, thoughts, snide remarks, or hitting the like, share, and subscribe button, uh, you guys help us, so thank you for that. But if you really want to be an amazing person and go even farther, then there's all these people over here. You could become a patron on Patreon and join these names. They are the ones who help me go and buy these because I am not sponsored to do this. Bad Axe paid me nothing to it. I offered to come up. I bought this saw so that I could come up and see it being made. And I like being able to do things that I want to do rather than things that businesses want me to do. So if you like that, then think about becoming a patron or a member. Click the little join button down below or the thank you. I think that's it for now. Until next time, have a wonderful day. You know this saw is a good saw because this slot here means your thumb is up.